What's up, Belmont fam? It's the number one YouTuber right here, Mr. O'Connell. Smash that like and subscribe button. Here we go with today's YouTube video. We got four things planned for today. One is our math facts, two is our read aloud, three is important announcements, and then four is a Carl Azuz style rap at the end of it. So make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end, all right? Without further ado, let's head over to our math facts. We practice our two, three, five, and 10. If you forgot any of it, you can watch it on the Belmont day two video. The twos are straightforward. We're gonna do it one time together and one time by yourself. The twos are like this. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Are you ready to chant some more? All right, now you try it. I'm going to throw up the fingers and mouth the words, but I'm not going to say them. Here we go. All right, I don't really know if you got it, but I hope you did. Fives are pretty straightforward. Just count by fives all the way up to 60. Hands up. Here we go. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. Take a deep breath. And we got the 10s. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. All right. Threes are the toughest ones we've learned so far let's go ahead and take them a couple two times as a practice here we go hands up i'll go nice and slow three six nine we look fine ten nope stop it yeah and then you do this ready mm -hmm. oh we already started all right it's fine i can edit it out all right go all right it's time for those threes the hardest one we've learned so far let's get our hands up we're gonna do it two times nice and slow to build up three six nine we look fine, 12, 15, math machine, 18, 21, this is fun, 24, 27, almost done, 30, 33, 36, do you like arithmetic? All right, one time a little bit faster, make sure you're throwing up your hands saying your numbers, here we go, threes, here we go, three, six, nine, we look fine, 12, 15, math machine, 
18, 21, this is fun. 24, 27, almost done. 30, 33, 36, do you like arithmetic? All right, we're going to move on to the fours. We know our twos, our threes, our fives, our tens, and our fours, all right? Fours, we're just going to do it and practice it one time. You can always rewind the video if you want to keep practicing. Here we go. Fours, hands up. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. That's how we roll our fours. 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48, la, 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 la. All right, not that hard. Let's try it again. Here we go, hands up. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24. That's how we roll our fours. 28, 32, 36, 40, 44, 48. La, 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 la. All right, so you can try that again. Tomorrow we're going to do 2, 3, 4, 5, and 10, just to make sure everybody's got it for the weekend. All right, there we go. All right, here we go. We're back for our Read Aloud Spy School by Stuart Gibbs. We're on chapter three. If you remember in the last two days, chapter one, he found out he was invited to a special spy school. And in chapter two, he arrived there, but the school was under attack. So we're on chapter three, confrontation. Thinking you might be ambushed by enemy operatives at any second is a lousy frame of mind to be in for your first school tour. Although I followed the girl past many locations that would be important to me if I survived, I could not focus on any of them. Meanwhile, the girl remained amazingly composed given the circumstances, even pointing out things of interest along the way, as though this were the standard orientation. This is the only dormitory for the school, she informed me as we crept through the first floor hallway, weapons at the ready. All 300 students live here. It was built over a century ago, so as you probably noticed, its enemy defense systems are pretty lousy. Plus, the plumbing is prehistoric. The mess hall is over there. Meal times are at 0, 0700, 1300, and 1800 hours. Now we're heading into the south passage between the dorm and the admin building. It's usually faster to go outside, but this way is better when the weather's bad or when there are enemy snipers on the property. There was the distant sound of gunfire shots. Even though it was taking place more than 100 yards away on the other side of the thick stone wall, I ducked reflexively. This provoked another sigh from the girl. Wait, I said, in all the excitement I'd forgotten something. We're not here alone. I came with Alexander Hale. I'd expected her to be relieved, maybe even thrilled. But to my surprise, she sounded irritated instead. Where is he? Outside, fighting those snipers. I think he saved my life earlier. I'm sure he'll think that too, she said. He, we reached a fork in the passage where windows opened onto the snow-covered lawns. The girl signaled me to stay low, then peered through the glass. It had grown too dark for me to make out anything other than the silhouettes of the building, but she seemed to see something. They have the entire campus perimeter covered, she said. We're not getting off the property, so here's the plan. There's an emergency radio beacon on the top floor of the administration building. She nodded towards a five-story gothic structure that loomed immediately south of us. It's a direct link to agency headquarters. It's so old school, the enemy probably don't even know it exists. If we can make it there, we can probably call for backup. Sounds good. I tried my best to sound calm, even though I was growing more terrified by the minute. Stay close and do what I tell you. The girl stared, started, the le started down the left fork of the hall, but paused to point to the right. The gym's down there, by the way, and the firing range just for future reference. I followed her, my head ducked below the windows, fearing imminent attack. My first gunfight wasn't going at all the way I'd expected. Where were all the bad guys, I wondered? Were we cleverly circumventing them, or were they waiting to ambush us? Where was Alexander Hale, and why hadn't the girl been happy to hear about him, and perhaps most important? Is there a men's room anywhere nearby? Oh, I really gotta go. This would be the first time I experienced what is generally referred to in spy school as Hogarth's theory of fear-based urination. The amount of danger you are in is directly proportional to how much you need to use the restroom. Abraham Hogarth was one of the first CIA operatives, and thus one of the original professors at spy school. He'd written the essential espionage textbook based on his experiences, and he was rumored to always wear an adult diaper just in case something went wrong. The girl sighed again. Why didn't you go before the gunfight? Oh, I didn't know there was going to be a gunfight, I said. In fact, I think I have to go because of the gunfight. Hold it in, buttercup. We can't afford to drop our guard. 
I tried to comply. We soon reached the Nathan Hale administration building, which turned out to be in the center of campus. Outside, all the other buildings radiated around it like the hub of a wheel. Inside, the passage we'd come down funneled into a towering entry hall flanked by sweeping grand staircases. Thick oak doors on one side of the room led outside, while on the other, two significantly larger doors stood open, revealing the school library and beyond. The girl started toward the closest staircase, then suddenly lashed out a hand and clenched my arm. I froze. She placed her lips a millimeter from my ear and spoke so softly I couldn't, almost couldn't hear it. Two enemy agents upstairs. The words were the scariest words that I had ever heard. I'll hold them off. Cut to the library and take the rear stairs up. To where? I tried to be as quiet as her, but I couldn't. Even my whisper sounded like an echo in the room. On the mezzanine level, a human shape emerged from the shadows. The principal's office, run! I might not have been able to shoot a gun or to fight hand to hand, but I was pretty good at running. I'd had to run away from Dirk Denkett's met plenty of times. However, I'd never run with a full on life or death adrenaline search before. It was like having afterburners. I covered the 20 yards to the library in the blink of an eye. Gunfire raked the carpet behind me and splintered the door jam as I lunged for safety. The library was cavernous, four floors of wide balconies ringing in central open space. On the main floor was a maze of shelves. Normally, I would have been thrilled by the sheer acres of books, but at the time, the library only looked like a gigantic booby trap to me. There were a thousand places for assassins to hide. In each corner, a staircase spiraled up. I zigzagged through the shelves toward one on the far side of the room and bounded upstairs when the sounds of gunfight echoed from the entry hall. A bullet pinged off the banister just as I reached the third floor. I hit the deck. On the first floor, a black-clad man clutching a machine gun darted toward my staircase. My taser wasn't going to be do any good from that distance, but there were shelf full of reference books nearby. I snatched the heaviest book I could find, quickly estimated the speed of my attacker, and determined the exact right moment to drop the book over the railing. From below came the distinct thump of a book collapsing with skull, followed by a thump of an assassin cl- collapsing. Contrary to everything Mike Brzezinski had ever claimed, I had just found a very real-world application for algebra. I dashed up to the fourth floor and found a door that looked as though it hadn't been opened in years. It led to a dingy old stairwell. One more flight up brought me into a long, wide hallway lined with imposing office doors. I dashed down it, scanning the nameplates on each. Dean of Student Affairs, Vice Dean of Risk Assessment, Director of Counter-Espionage. Finally, I found one that said, Principal. From the direction I'd come, I'd hear footsteps pounding up the stairs. More than one set, I threw myself against the principal doors. It was locked. I bounced off it and landed on my butt in the hallway. There was a computerized keypad to the right of the door, a tiny screen above it reading, Enter access code. No one had said anything about access codes. I glanced back along the dingy stairwell. The footsteps were louder, as though my enemies were almost to the door. They'd emerged within seconds, far too little time for me to race to the safety of the far end of the hall. The principal's door was the only escape route, and I could think of only one way to get through it. I flipped on my taser, and I jammed it into the keypad. The tiny screen flickered as I shocked the system. Then the electricity overloaded, and every light in the hall blew out, plunging me into darkness. That had not been my plan. There was a thump from the end of the hall as an enemy agent banged into the door, followed by what I assumed were curse words in a language I did not know. Two seconds later, three high-powered flashlight beams flicked on at the end of the hall. At the opposite end, three more flicked on, which meant that I was now flanked by six very heavily armed men in total darkness. So I did the only thing I could think to do. I got ready to surrender. I raised my hands over my head and backed against the principal's door, accidentally bumping the handle. It lowered. Apparently, I'd unlocked it. All six flashlight beams swung toward the sound. I slipped into the office, slammed the door shut, and promptly ran right into a coffee table. It cut me off at the knees, so I fell right under the carpet. The lights turned on again. Please don't kill me. I I don't know anything. I just started here today. Begging for mercy, said a disappointed voice. That's D-quality performance for sure. There were murmurs of assent. I slowly lifted my eyes from the deep pile carpet. Instead of a horde of assassins aiming guns, I found myself facing a conference table. Two middle-aged men and one middle-aged woman were on the far side, shaking their heads. Next to them stood Alexander Hale. I heard an electronic hum behind me and glanced over my shoulder. There was a bank of monitors presenting, viewing every place I'd been on campus. This was a test? Lucky for you, said the man in the center of the table, who was the owner of the disappointed voice. 
He was a stocky man who seemed to think he was a little bit more roguish than he truly was. His suit was dotted with old food stains. His waistline kind of stretched the belt of his pants to the breaking point. And though his hair was thick and looked perfect, it was quite obviously a toupee. If this had been a real incident of external aggression, we'd be mailing your remains home in a doggy bag. Well, I haven't even learned anything yet, I said. I just got here. I'm well aware of that. The SACS exam is standard for all students upon arrival. I looked to Alexander for help. Survival and combat skills assessment, he said. I thought that trick he did with a reference book in the library was rather clever. It was a lucky shot, Bad Toupee said dismissively. And using the taser on the keypad? We've never seen that before. For good reason. It was stupid, said the man with the bad toupee, and he gave me a hard stare. He had a slight tick, a twitch in his left eye, which seemed to be exacerbated by his anger. I'm the principal of this academy. These are vice presidents, agents Connor and Dixon. You've already met Alexander Hale and, of course, Erica. I turned around. The girl was behind me. She had come in without making a sound. I gave her half a wave hello, but she didn't give me anything back. I think we're all in agreement that your performance today was deplorable. You've displayed amateur-level skills, or worse, in virtually every arena. Unarmed combat, elusiveness, savoir faire. Is there an essay portion of the test? I'm actually really good on essays. The principal lifted his eye, left eye twitching wildly. You're not so hot at knowing when to keep your mouth shut either. Frankly, if you hadn't done so well on your sticks and shown extraordinary aptitude for cryptography, I'd be sending you right back home to your mommy and your daddy. But we'll just see half of what you have to do. You got a lot of work to do, Ripley, and as of now, you've got a D minus average. And with that, he waved me around, away. I left the office feeling kind of hollow inside. I'd never had a grade lower than a B in my life, and that was in 89 in handwriting. I was also slightly confused by something the principal had said. I'd never known I had extraordinary cryptographic ability. In fact, despite my gift for math, I'd always found cryptography rather difficult. Magic and logic will get you so far with code, you also need to be good at wordplay which is why I could calculate exactly how many seconds I'd been at spy school, but still be stumped by the daily jumble on a regular basis. There had been a few cryptography games on the CIA website. I was under the impression that I'd failed them. Perhaps they'd been designed to detect some skill I didn't even know about. Erica stepped into the hall behind me. It's nothing to be ashamed of, right? I mean, I had no training in anything yet. I'll bet no one does well on this test when they get here. I got a hundred, she said, and left without saying goodbye. Thus, a mere 23 minutes after my arrival at spy school, I learned something extremely important. It wasn't going to be easy. One is that if you need any work packets, you can go and pick them up right at Belmont Academy. They're there from 10 to 12, as well as giving out free lunch and free breakfast if anybody needs it. So make sure you can go down there from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. All right, now it's time for a rap battle. All right, this is dedicated to my man, Carl Azus. Here we go. It stings to be stuck inside all day when you'd rather go outside and run and play. But don't forget if you run out of things to do that your teacher's got work and it's ready for you. If you need some more work, then this is what you can do. You can go to a place called the Belmont School. You can get the work there, free lunch as well, and then you can pretend you hear the school bell. But until you, it's time for you to go back to school, Make sure you take care and don't act like a fool. If you want to be a good grandson or granddaughter, wash your hands 20 seconds hot soap and water.